a dog. Um, just how do you feel like that one got away from you guys? I, I thought their pace, their, their speed eventually got us. I thought fatigue was a factor, but uh, let's give the Pacers a lot of credit. I think Rick Carlisle's done an amazing job. Um, they've, they've created a hell of a team, um, not only young. Um, I think the Siakam trade um, really changed, will change their fortunes going forward. Um, you know, they're just a tough team. You know, obviously we had guys out and all that, um, and that's hard, right? But just give them credit. I thought they played terrific, and terrific city, uh, terrific franchise. So what did you see from Dame tonight? I thought it just took him a while uh, to get going. Um, you know, you could tell off of pick and rolls, he didn't have a lot of explosion, uh, couldn't beat guys early. I thought in the second half he was better, but by that time we were in a hole. Um, you know, it was tough because you want him on the floor, you know, uh, but you also knew that it may take a minute, and on, in a playoff game six, you probably don't have that minute. And uh, I just love the fact that he knew he wasn't 100%. Uh, there's a lot of players that wouldn't have played tonight. And, um, you know, so just more respect for Dame coming from me um, because I watched him work out and he looked good, didn't look great. Uh, but the fact that he just wanted to be out there with his guys is pretty cool. Um, we spent kind of the second half of the season, once you took over, talking about the two-man game with Giannis and Dame. You don't get a second of it in the playoffs. No. Uh, just uh, wh where are your thoughts at as yeah. the season wraps up? Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't, I don't know where my thoughts are right now. Um, I really like this team. Um, you know, obviously we're going to have to make uh, do some things, right? Um, but never really having the chance to do any of the two-man game that you're talking about with Dame and Giannis. We did it on that West Coast trip, and it was starting to cook, and then I think Dame went out, then Giannis went out. Uh, never, ever, I don't think we had, what, two games with all three guys, four games with all three guys. So we never got a chance to, to run the three-man. We never really had a chance to create our offense that we wanted to create. Um, but we'll have that chance. Uh, we'll have a camp. Um, and so I'm looking forward to it. Series, uh, just how would you just, you know, the effort you got from your guys in general? Uh, the, the effort was amazing. Listen, we we're the we're, last game, we were the first team in NBA history to win a game with your two best scores out. I mean, that's history. That's not like one game or one year. It's hard to do, man. Like, um, take Jokic and Murray away. You know, go to each team and take their two best players away. It's going to be hard. Uh, we understood that. But what I loved about our guys is no one wavered. That one guy wavered. Every single guy in that locker room thought, even without those guys, we're still going to win this series. Um, and, and that says a lot about the character of your team. Yeah. Thanks to Obi Toppin and TJ McConnell, they had a big advantage on yeah. bench points. How much were, were those guys a big factor in today? They were huge. I, I, I think Toppin had a hell of a series overall. Uh, just his energy, his speed, uh, playing multiple positions. He allowed them to switch a lot of stuff. And uh, TJ is just a pain in the ass. He just really is. And he was great. Uh, he didn't do great offensively for them. Um, but he was, he was just this pass defensively. He does what he does, you know. And then he buys the coaches, all of us, a bottle of a wine. So thank you, TJ. I don't know what that meant, but thank you. <laughs> Uh, just you, you know, come into the job when you started. You acknowledged that no training camp exactly would be yeah. a challenge. Um, just how do you, you know, the challenge and, and having done it now for half a season? How, how, how uh, you listen, about it? I, I love it. Um, I, I have an amazing appreciation uh, for the city I live in, Milwaukee now. Um, you know, it's funny. I was there in college, and I thought a lot about it. Um, didn't didn't realize how much it would mean to me honestly, until I got the job. And then I started thinking about all the guys, Hank Raymond's and Rick Majerus and uh, all the professors at Marquette. Uh, and I probably wouldn't be here if I hadn't have gone to that school. Um, and so a lot of ways I feel like um, I'm going to do whatever I can uh, for this franchise. And I really am. I, I think we can win. Um, I do. Um, I'm going to do everything I can to create that. Um, because it means more to me than I think you think uh, for all those reasons. So um, I'm 
it's rare. Usually right after the year, you want to go take a break. I can't wait to get started, um, uh, to, to, you know, get to camp and be able to put all the things we think we need. So, Following up on that, what does this offseason now look like for you, saying you live in Milwaukee and you want to get things going? Yeah, um, just work, you know. Um, I'm going to enjoy it, too. That's what we do. We don't have a lot of time, uh, especially coaches these days, to enjoy it. You work through the summer. Um, you know, I'm not set with John yet about where we're going, what we're doing, any of that. It's too early for that. Um, I'm just going to appreciate the guys that I had this year, and then we, we got to start building. I know this is your only first year here, but five of the last six playoffs, the Bucks have dealt with pretty serious injuries, yeah. plus missing playoff games, things like yeah. that. Um, as you consider the future of this team, how do you think about trying to manage that while, while still yeah, trying listen, to... Yeah, listen, injuries are just part of it. Uh, I've had, personally, just a horrendous streak. You know, uh, you know, Joel, all three years uh, in Philadelphia, hurt, you know. Uh, last couple of years with the Clippers with Chris Paul and Blake hurt, right? Um, it takes, and I say this all the time, winning is incredibly hard. Uh, it takes 12, 15 players turning themselves into one and buying in, uh, your staff being together as one, and then health. And then it's, you still may not win. You know, it's just hard. Um, and you're not going to win unless you're healthy or unless you're really deep. So um, nothing you can do about it. You know, Giannis plays the way he plays, and we need him to continue to play that way. Um, Dame probably had a season this year where he never really could get in the right condition that he wanted because he didn't know where he was going all summer, and so he couldn't work out. Um, Chris, this may be the healthiest we've seen him, so maybe that's something we can build on. So we'll see. With Chris, I mean, he had such a great series, but did you see him kind of run out of gas yeah, tonight? Yeah, yeah. And I also thought, you know, bringing Dame back in some ways, he kind of, because he was exhausted, he was like, you go do it. Uh, uh, and I thought that was great of him, uh, but I thought we, we should have involved him way more. Uh, before you got here, this was one of the best defensive teams in the league. Obviously, they trade out Drew Holiday, but I'm curious, do you see – the base of what can still be a great defense? Yeah, yeah, we showed it in spurts. Um, you know, we have to do a couple of things that I, I know we can do, uh, but we can be a, we, we cannot be a bad defensive team and win anything. The numbers say that. You, you got to be in the top 10 in both, right? Top five in one. Uh, there's been some outliers, but overall, you got to be a top 10 defense and a top 10 offense. Um, we got the offensive part covered. Now, now we got to get to the defensive part. Can Brooke still be a part of that? At yeah, age? no doubt. Uh, just, uh, you know, you mentioned just some things throughout the course of the season, whether it be coaching staff, you talked about sort of the travel staff in general. Like, do you feel like going forward now you still want to, like, almost implement your, um, I don't know, sort of coaching? Like, do you still feel like you've been able to sort of put your stamp in? Is that something going forward that you – you know, we'll be able to do. Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, obviously, I got to evaluate everything and build the right staff so we can have the right staff and all that stuff. But um, I absolutely do. Um, uh, it's an advantage now going through the half of the season and coming to camp, then taking a new job. You know, at least I've been with these guys, kind of know how they tick. I kind of know uh, things that you would have never known that. So um, I think it's an advantage for me coming into next year. Thanks, guys.